All right, thank you everyone for coming out tonight. Uh, I call this meeting to order at 6 p.m. Tuesday, July 11th, regular meeting of the Board of Directors of the Isla Vista Community Services District. And I'd like to announce that this meeting is being recorded. Director Brandt, you can take roll call. Director Bertrand. Present. Director Jordan. Present. Director Brandt. Present. Director Freeman. Present. Director Hedges. Present. Director Geis. Present. Director Thurlow. Here. All right, we have a quorum. Um, at this time, any reports from <coughs> committees that have met since our last regular meeting? Do we meet? No, has the we formation committee met? The formation committee has met, yes. Okay. You want me to give a little... I was little on vacation, I forgot. <laughs> please, That's please okay, yeah. So the main thing that came out of our formation committee meeting is more discussions about the general manager position. Um, we ended up uh, asking uh, district council to answer some questions for us, and so I sent those over to Ross uh, about, I think, a, a number of days ago. The bulk of the questions are, um, can you look at the agreement that we previously brought to the board back in June and give us uh, some advice on uh, if it looks sound, uh, areas where it could be improved. Uh, the other thing we asked is that should the board move forward with uh, the plan to uh, contract with an independent contractor, whether that's an, uh, an agency or an individual, what are the legal parameters and boundaries of the relationship that the board can have with that person? Um, and so we're looking forward to hearing more about that in the committee. Um, and we also changed the dates. So this is another thing that since the board changed our meetings, the committees have had to change their schedule as well. So I'm planning on sending out a schedule that has all of the regular meetings for the foreseeable future. I'm just waiting to hear if policy committee is gonna change their regular meeting date. Uh, and then I'll get that sent out. But we're the first and third Mondays of each month now at 10 a.m. Thank you. Just uh, can, can I make a point on that? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, Come right back the here. first Monday in September is Labor Day. That's right. So the committee is going to have to take action to cancel that one. Okay. Thank you. Director Freeman? I have a uh, report from the Lackett meeting of the Policy Committee. Um, so two things. First of all is that um, uh, we will have on our agenda for the next Policy Committee meeting that we have to change the date of Policy Committee meeting. We may or may not do it, of course, because we, I can't predict. I mean, I. I'm hoping to do it, <laughs> but uh, uh, we will have that on our agenda for the next policy committee meeting. Um, I, uh, I can, we currently have two members on policy committee, and uh, on Thursday I ended up getting really sick, and so I canceled the meeting instead of noticing a meeting, and then I was, it's a good thing actually that I, <laughs> I canceled that meeting, um, and so uh, we will have to figure that out. Um, but then I also, a lot of our agenda items for policy committee are, um, Ross suggested that we just have Ross do a whole policy manual, uh, and so I was wondering, uh, I don't even know if I can ask about a status update on that now, or if we should, but I'm, that's, that is what I am currently hoping will happen at some point, so that we can talk about that at the policy committee. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure you as a chair of the policy committee can communicate with yeah. Ross about uh, so. what will be appropriate for the next meeting agenda. Director Brandt? Oh, uh, <laughs> never mind. Okay. Any other committee reports? Um, all right. If none, uh, we'll go to reports from members of the board. Um, I'll start off. So after consulting with Mr. Trendle um, on the 26th, or it was the 28th of June, uh, we entered into the joint powers agreement with um, the Golden State Risk Management Authority for general liability insurance effective July 1st. Um, so we got all of that done in time. They ended up sending over um, a document separate from uh, the JPA and bylaws that kind of just uh, said that we agree to both of them. So I signed that. It was pretty simple. Um, and Mr. Trindle looked over all of the, um, both of the JPA and the bylaws and everything was good. Um, so that's awesome that we were able to accomplish that. Thanks again, Bob, for all you did to set that up and uh, for the whole board on that matter. Um, I've been in touch with the third district office and county general services about the office space agreement. Gina's been really helpful with um, just moving that process along and uh, getting me in touch with all the relevant folks. Um, they are still developing it. Yesterday it left general services to uh, county council, um, so hopefully that's going to be a speedy return. The board's given me authorization to enter into that agreement upon consultation with council. Um, so as soon as I get it, me and Russ will be in touch um, about getting that done. Um, on 
June 26, um, before our budget hearing, I attended the Isle of Vista Safe Sexual Assault Task Force meeting. Um, it was a good meeting with stakeholders. Uh, the third district office was there, UCPD, um, Santa Barbara Rape Crisis Center, and some other county departments. Um, we had good discussion about what our agencies are currently doing, as well as an overview of the sexual assault response team. Um, I'll be attending the next meeting on July 31st. At the meeting, I spoke a bit about um, the idea that I've um, presented to the board and we've discussed about um, expanding the CSO program to make it more accessible in Ala Vista. That's something that a lot of the members of the committee um, were pretty interested in and we had some good discussion on that. Um, and then I also spoke about how with the opening of our office, one of the things that we should get, um, and this was per the district attorney's request, is have information available um, on sexual assault prevention and resources should anyone come to our office um, looking for help <coughs> to be able to point them in the right direction. Um, this coming week is the Young Elected Officials Network Conference. Uh, myself and Director Brandt will be in San Francisco from the 12th to the 16th. Um, it's with elected officials from all over the country um, covering a lot of great topics. This year is focusing a lot on policing and um, some of the workshops that I'm especially excited for in terms of what I learned for this, uh, this board is um, topics on community policing being taught by the District Attorney and Public Defender of San Francisco, um, harm reduction strategies for dealing with drug issues in communities, another thing that will be relevant here, as well as restorative justice. Um, and then lastly, I'll be going back to Sacramento on the 19th for um, the Assembly Bill 722 hearing before the Senate Committee on Government and Finance. Um, we've been all in touch, uh, myself, uh, the third district office and um, assembly member Lamone's office about the process for getting this bill to committee. Um, there have been changes attempted, there's been um, a lot of moving pieces on it, but finally um, assembly member Lamone uh, submitted a uh, version of the bill that seems pretty straightforward for getting through committee. Um, it, it, it's the same intention of what we endorsed here, just a little more clarified. Um, and I'm looking forward to that hearing. Uh, that concludes my report. Uh, Director Jordan? None. None. Director Brent? Uh, so let's see. Um, this past weekend on Friday, I had the opportunity to uh, go up to Sacramento uh, with Jonathan, who's here in the audience. And uh, we got to uh, meet up with a group of pretty diverse folks uh, from across the state who live in unincorporated areas. Um, unincorporated communities uh, and work with them, meet with some state legislators um, and uh, talk about things that would improve unincorporated communities that the state could do. Um, the folks were from places like Castro Valley, Mountain House, Arden Arcade, um, all across the state really. Uh, and we ended up, uh, we ended up uh, meeting up with them afterwards and deciding to become a more formalized organization. So, um, I just bring it to everyone's attention because I think it's a really cool thing um, to have, you know, as we are an unincorporated community, um, you know, there are a lot of things, um, there are a lot of areas where the issues that we all face sort of intersect. Um, and so we're looking forward to, I'll be bringing some updates here when there is anything relevant. Um, and um, that, that's all I have to report. Thank you. Director Freeman. Um, I received an email from <coughs> Caitlin K. Malone, which then was also sent to Ethan Bertrand, just um, who is, she is a lawyer um, at BHFS, um, which was um, Braunstein, Hyatt, Farber, and Schreck, um, who is, uh, I, I happen, that happens to be the same law firm as Galita West Sanitary, I don't know, just saying, uh, and uh, they requested um, uh, audio from the meetings that, uh, that I had to posted. I gave the audio to them very promptly, but just interesting that we got this request, so people know that that happened. Thank you, and I'll add that uh, Mr. Trindle was consulted on that. Uh, Spencer, I, I was just going to ask the clarifying question of why you forwarded to Ethan if it was... I didn't forward It wasn't forwarded to me, but... Oh, check. okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Director Hedges? Nothing. Director Geis? Uh, uh, I think we have the budget on the agenda and we have an update on transactions we processed in the Treasury so we can wait to the regular agenda. I did get correspondence from the um, D 
district attorney's office regarding some of our Brown Act violations, and I don't know if they sent that to everybody or uh, if it just came to me. We got it to everyone. Mr. Trindle, I think, will be able to speak on that. Okay, yeah. cool. Follow Thank that. you. Uh, Director Thurlow? Um, let me ask our council uh, how far we can go into the discussion of um, an audit. An audit? Yeah. In terms of? Uh, in terms of uh, the requirement that we perform an audit on last year's um, fiscal activity, which essentially was one check that came in. I Does it need to be agendized? It, if you're just going to give a report on it, that's something that's appropriate at this point. But if you're looking for some type of feedback from the rest of the, the board, then that's something that should probably be agendized for a future meeting. Actually, I, I wanted to see if I could, we could ask you to perform a action in regards to that. Does that need to be agendized? You can ask me as a director of the board to, okay. uh, to look at something. What is it that you're looking can, at? Um, I receive information that we may not need to do an audit for last year and that there is a waiver system in place for uh, agencies like ours where there's very, very minimal um, financial activity and this would get us out of either having to pay for an audit or trying to find somebody pro bono. But essentially based on the information I received is there's a waiver system and I assume that you might be able to find something out about that. I, I will, and I'll prepare a uh, report for the board for next meeting. Great, thank you. I, I looked at that issue also, and if you go to 26909 of the government code, there's some uh, options for us to request the board of supervisors to go to a biannual audit, so we could combine last year's audit with this year's audit and uh, next year's audit but it has to be approved by the Board of Supervisors sure because there's a requirement to file these annual audits with the county controller and that's how they keep control so letting somebody do biannual kind of changes it but for this first year I'm sure they let us do it yeah I'm, I'm familiar with, with that provision and I'll put together a report that lays out those options and the board can okay. make a decision at that point great yeah. then that could save us a thousand on the budget so, All right. for, Thank for, you. for the year, because we wouldn't have the budget it to, for three We just keep whacking that budget, aren't yeah. we? Right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, and one thing that I left out of my uh, report is just to introduce you to our intern, uh, Penelope Ferguson, for anyone who hasn't met her. She's uh, great. We're working together. Um, glad to have her on the team. All right. Uh, now 1.6, report from District Council. I have a, thank you, Mr. President, uh, all you. the members of the board. I have a, a few points to go over for um, my portion of the reports. So I'll try to get through them quickly. If there are any questions, uh, you can uh, stop me and, uh, as we're going. Uh, the first is in reference to Director Freeman on the policy manual. It, it was my suggestion that either, it was my suggestion that, that my office would prepare a, a kind of a draft a policy manual and incorporate uh, policies that have already been considered uh, by the policy committee and, and or already adopted by the board and just roll those in. Uh, we have access to a number of uh, policy manuals. It saves the, the district and the board members from having just to create everything uh, uh, from whole cloth. So uh, it'll be a starting point. Uh, it won't be a, f a finished product, uh, but my intention would be to deliver that to the policy committee for consideration either at their next meeting or the second depending upon when it is uh, that, that you're meeting. Uh, on the topic of, of Public Records Act requests, as a public body of course you know uh, that the district is subject to the Public Records Act and there are certain requirements for the receipt of requests, a time in which to respond, uh, and how to respond. Um, I would ask that if you receive one as an individual board member or any of the interns who receive uh, any requests uh, for public records, uh, please forward those to, to my office. Uh, my goal is, is to make sure that the responses are consistent. Obviously, the obligation of the district is to, uh, is to comply with the law and to be responsive and to be transparent. Uh, my goal really is just to make sure that we're building best practices as a foundational matter uh, and that the, each request is handled uh, consistently uh, to establish um, uh, a good practices moving forward. Uh, to that end, uh, I've had my office preparing uh, template uh, PRA uh, responses for different types of situations. 
what that will enable uh, the district to do is when staff start becoming a board or if uh, interns are involved in the process, it'll help to streamline the receipt, the review, and the response process uh, under the Public Records Act and to help make it consistent. The, uh, the California Special Districts Association Conference is coming up, if you're not aware of that. It's going to be held in Monterey uh, this year. It runs from September 25th through the 28th, I believe. I will be in attendance. If any of you are attending, I will see you there. Uh, there are a lot of programs that are available, including uh, financing, uh, management best practices, Brown Act matters, uh, public uh, risk liability, all kinds of things that might be useful if you have the opportunity uh, to attend. Uh, I alluded to this at, my, at the last report that I gave, um, or maybe it was to individuals. Uh, I, I attended the Tri-Counties Local Government uh, Attorneys Association. It's an association made up of all the, the lawyers who serve local government agencies in the Tri-County area. Uh, the city attorney from Ventura, city attorney from Oxnard, Santa Barbara, uh, and uh, some other uh, uh, private entities who provide contract services such as myself. Uh, it was good. I knew some of the people there and uh, established some relationships. I also started to let them know uh, as to the existence of the district and to, in an effort to try and start expanding the professional network of, of the district uh, to see if we can't get some help. To that end, uh, I got a couple of potentially helpful tips uh, on where the district might be able to find uh, a retired uh, special district's uh, general manager or perhaps a retired city manager uh, who would be willing to offer some interim services. Um, one of my stops is going to be the uh, International City Manager, City and County Managers Association, the ICMA.org, uh, and I also got a couple of others. Um, basically, what I uh, would do is find out where some contacts might be and then provide that for the board, then to make a decision as someone's going to make contact in an effort to try to get some, uh, some staff executive leadership on the board uh, at a price that's reasonable and appropriate. I did receive uh, from uh, Secretary Brandt the general manager agreement. Um, I will have my comments and suggestions uh, turned around in time for the next uh, formation committee meeting. Uh, uh, President Bertrand and uh, Director Geis alluded to a Brown Act letter that was received from the uh, Santa Barbara County District Attorney's Office. Uh, they concluded their investigation and to a complaint of of uh, alleged Brown Act uh, violations that occurred uh, sometime in April and uh, potentially March of this year uh, by the certain board members in acting in their capacity as members of committees. Uh, there was no finding of wrongdoing, but the uh, county appropriately urged the district to take measures necessary to make sure that the letter and the spirit of the Brown Act uh, is, is followed. Obviously, part of me being here is to assist the board uh, in, in doing that. Uh, I provided a copy of that to the board via email uh, and I also uh, provided a copy uh, to the complainant uh, in that matter and that's it. Any questions that I can answer for the board? Awesome. Thank you okay. so much. All right. Uh, we'll now move to the consent agenda uh, 2.1 and 2.2. Uh, does anyone have anything that they need to pull? Bless you. Thank you. All right, uh, do I hear a motion? I'll move approval of the consent agenda. Second. Second. Okay, is there any public comment on these minutes being approved? No? All right, any more board discussion? All right, all those in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. All right, now a public comment. At this time, any member of the public may speak on matters within the subject jurisdiction of the Board of Directors that are not on the agenda. The Board will not take action on any item not on the agenda except as provided by law. Would anyone like to speak during public comment? We might have to pull that away from the wall. I don't know how close it is. I like getting in tight spaces. All right, but I'll move it. Um, I just wanted to, I'm Gina Fisher, I work for Third District Supervisor Joan Hartman, and I wanted to let you guys know about um, a public meeting at, about Goleta Beach Park, which is not in Isla Vista and it's not in the Third District, but it's very close to here, and a lot of your constituents um, access that beach. And so the meeting is taking place Thursday, July 13th, so just this Thursday at 6 p.m., 
at the Goleta Union School District Office Boardroom, which is at 401 North Fairview Avenue in Goleta. And so it's about hearing an update on the status of uh, the beach and the park management, which is a county, it's a county beach. So I have um, some flyers in English and Spanish that I'll put on the back table, but I just want to let you guys know that that was there and that feel free to um, inform your constituents about that and other stakeholders. Awesome. Any questions? Are there, are there proposed changes on the table or is it just an update on operations? So, um, there are a number of emergency permits um, issued by the Coastal Commission as pertains to Goleta Beach. We have had a couple of years of significant storm events that have um, taken um, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of cubic feet of sand away from the beach. And so the County Board of Supervisors has to respond to those emergency permits with the Coastal Commission by September. And so the Board of Supervisors is going to have um, this um, on their agenda for the August 22nd meeting. So this is basically a public information meeting, not as much of a, you know, where everybody gets to, um, you know, say what they yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> There's a very limited actions that no action. This is actually the Parks Commission is the County Parks Commission is facilitating this meeting, the County uh, Parks Commission. Um, so it's not an open forum for like yeah, ideas yeah, yeah. per se, but the public can ask questions and be informed about the process. Perfect. Do you have a Facebook event? I, that, you, you answered my question, but being a long-term resident and then going to the Galita Beach right. for a long time, it's pretty shocking how much of the beach is <laughs> gone yeah. from when I was when I when I was young and used to take my kids there. So yeah. it's pretty shocking. Yeah. Um, the rocks. I do not know if there is a public Facebook page because it's the community services department, so I'm just passing along. I am not aware of one. Okay, got it. Cool. And I am. Um, I did see some outreach in uh, local online news um, sources. I saw it in NewsHawk and The Independent. So hopefully a, a good amount of people did uh, hear about it. I'll certainly share it out on my networks. Any other questions? All right. And thank was you. that it, Gina? That was all. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Is there any other public comment? I have a question. Can I voice someone else's public comments or concern, actually? Is it from a, a constituent of the from district? Two, two constituents, yes. Uh, yes, you may. Um, that, that'll be fine. Oh, thank you. Um, so Please just let us know who they are. Um, well, okay, so the two constituents that I met with um, were two mothers. Uh, one of them would like to remain anonymous, though I did uh, meet her by uh, just going door to door, actually. Um, I went along the 6 6 block of Abreu. And the second individual was also a mother. Um, and her name is Jillian. That's all she that she did want to tell me. She lived along the six, six block of Picasso. Um, I I I do this uh, because of public, that's what I have to do public engagement. And so I asked I asked the first uh, individual what was her concern or what did she want to see differently within Isla Vista. Um, and the only one thing that she wanted to do or know was how this board could help out with traffic safety throughout Isla Vista. Um, and how we could potentially work in tandem with, uh, if because you know, I know policing and, and, and uh, within Isla Vista is, is one of our potential powers, and sh maybe there could be some coordination with this, um, and and pe and drivers uh, not only disobeying the stop signs, uh, but just zooming down the streets and especially on uh, on ones where you know, Isla Vista doesn't have sidewalks. Um, so uh, safety for her children was her primary concern. And then to corroborate this, and this is where the second individual came in, uh, 10 minutes later when I walked around on Picasso where I met this uh, a lady, she was with her daughter and she voiced the same similar concerns, like well, what would you like to see differently within your community? Still again, uh, traffic safety throughout Ala Vista and, and as we were walking and talking, um, a car just zoomed out of the driveway, uh, um, I dare say almost like closely hitting her daughter who was just a few feet in front of us. Um, so I, and this all also goes for bikers and, and biker safety, not only do they like, not really look at stop signs and dis disobey them, but they're, like, they're also, you know, caught up in everything in, in the traffic file list. So maybe for the future, um, that's, what, that, uh, that's what they'd like to see uh, us work on. Thank you. Can, you. can you make sure, since it's being taped, that you identify your, or yes. yourself? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. My name is uh, Marlon Stephen Pro, and I'm, again, the public uh, public engagement intern for uh, the Elvis Community Services District. Thank you. Hey. Thank you.
Awesome. Any other public comment? All right, seeing none, uh, moving on to discussion and action items. Um, first up, scheduling and operating the community room. Discuss and take action to implement initial procedures for handling scheduling requests for the community room, distributing keys, and conducting outreach for the use of the room. Um, I've added this to the agenda after realizing at our last regular board meeting that we understood that we'd be taking on the responsibility of um, operating this room, uh, but we didn't put in place any plan to figure out the, the start of it. So essentially what I'm asking is for the board uh, to consider giving me direction to coordinate the work of interns to schedule and, uh, and operate this community room until another plan is put in place. I have been working with um, Penny and she's uh, very interested in uh, working on this project. Additionally, we would look to meet with Rodney Gould at the Isla Vista Recreation and Park District uh, to figure out the best practices for um, how the room's been managed thus far. Um, what, I ins what I foresee us doing is uh, creating an email um, that people can reach us at for this room, uh, such as ivcommunityroom at gmail.com, uh, creating a Google Calendar to manage, the, uh, to manage the room, and providing regular report back to the board um, until we do uh, get in place something more solid. All I want for this is just to make sure we have something in place for when our agreement is completed and Rodney hands over the keys. Uh, any board <coughs> discussion? So I'll move to direct. Jay had his hand up. Cool. Jay? I was going to say that I'm, I'm excited to hear that you've been thinking about this problem and it sounds like you have a good plan, so I'm excited now, now to hear George's motion. Okay, I'll go to the public real quick and then we'll come back for a motion. Okay. Any public comments? All right, then, George. What was the motion? What what motion? <coughs> you have it in your agenda. Oh, what do you have in your agenda? Uh, uh, right. My motion is right here. It's in the actual attachment. Okay. Motion. I'll, I'll, I'll make that motion. Do you want to do it for the recording? <laughs> oh, for the recording, yeah, that's yeah. right. I'll move to direct the board president to coordinate with interns in overseeing the initial scheduling operation. Community room upon the district's assumption of this responsibility effective until the Board of Directors votes to implement another system. Second. Okay. Made by Fairlo, seconded by Jordan. Um, and I would like Thank to... Thank you. Thank you for taking that on. Yeah. That's oh. really a big deal. Thank very, you so very much. Very glad to do that. I've enjoyed uh, many great experiences in this room. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, real quick, I'd just like to ask Council if um, there's any, any issues that you see in this direction. Uh, no. Uh, the only thing I would add is to keep in mind that this will be a public record. So when, if people are signing up to use that, uh, it will be a public record. And if anybody requests to see who's been using the room, that information will go out. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. All right, any more public comment? Seeing no uh, one, or Director Brandt? Oh, I just, I just had just, to. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that uh, I think that um, if you are in need of help from other interns, I think my intern would be interested in that as well. And me, I can help. Cool. Thank you. Director Phil? Um, just a quick question here. Is there currently a policy on the use of the room? I do not believe that there is a policy at the park district level. I do imagine that there is a use policy at the county level. Um, so that's something that I need to communicate with Rodney to figure out what he's been doing and more importantly figure out what the county's policy is. Uh, and report back to the board on that. I think, yeah, I think that's going to be important because I think there will come a time when there is somebody who wants to use the room and there's going to be a controversy about whether that's appropriate. Let's yeah. hope not. <laughs> Let's hope knock not. on some wood. But great idea, Director Guys. <laughs> is it government use only? No. No. Um, some of the things that have happened here over the past year are art exhibits, um, meetings of the Isla Vista Community Network. There's a tutoring program that meets here during the week. Um, there was the community planning workshop, lots of great community uses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool. uh, Director Freeman? There's in fact already been a mild controversy that I personally think was a misunderstanding that got overblown, but that not everyone did, um, related to checking out and utilizing this room um, while the park district was running it. Um, there's actually potentially other people who would be wanting to comment on that, I don't know, but I I'm the same. It, it, the conflicts will come up because they already have come up. Thank you. I think we're digressing. Can we vote? Yes. Um, all right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? 
So ordered, motion passes 7-0. Uh, thanks so much. I think this is going to be a great development, and I look forward to reporting on our progress. <laughs> All right. Now 4.2, office space update. Receive an update on the status of the office space agreement. Consider plans for initial equipment furnishing of the office, and also the initial use of the office. Um, the reason I put this on here was just, as I mentioned in the um, report I gave, there is, are still developments occurring with the development of this agreement. I was hoping that in time for this meeting I would have a, a final agreement to present, um, but certainly by the next meeting, um, although I do have the authorization to move forward with it. However, I did think that it could be helpful for us just to discuss some initial plans. I know um, Director Thurlow has mentioned that he's working on a project to uh, bring in some initial uh, furniture or equipment, um, and also we should think about our initial use and hours. So Director Thurlow, or Director Jordan, you uh, go first. I had a couple questions on that. When it comes to furnishing the office, I love Craigslist free. It's like my favorite thing in the whole world. I go on it literally every day, and there's always free office stuff. Are we allowed to accept those things, or is that technically, do they have to fill out some kind of donation slip? Because I just go and pick it up off the curb all the time. And we could furnish the whole office in like one day, I bet. Awesome. I know that we do have in place a donations policy where we um, do keep track of donations um, as a government agency just what if to... you pick it up off the curb? <laughs> I'm serious. No would it be mine then, and then would I have to donate it? Uh, yes, yes. So if I yes. received it from someone on Craigslist, and then I donated it? Ms. President, I, I can give a little background. I, I would okay. really appreciate that. The, the issue is to keep it an inventory. That way, if it comes to disposition of the property, there has to be a certain procedure that's followed the disposition of all the property, since it's, it's property of the district, not an individual. That's why having an inventory of donations as they come in is important as a record-keeping matter. Thank you. Director Freeman? Um, I, I, um, that, that, that's, I just want to make sure that, that is interesting. Okay. But there's also some subtleness there of, like, like, for example, if Natalie receives it as a donation, does she then have to report it in any particular way? If we receive it as, as a reporting, it's something that's a little bit separate to me than if we just than if we just have to make certain that we have a list of the things that we own. But that's a crossover to whether that triggers any type of a gifting under the Fair Political Practices Act. And as long as any individual director does not receive a gift that is in excess of $49 from any one individual or in excess of $450 in aggregate across the year, then it's not reportable. Otherwise, it would be reportable, but it's not a bar to receiving it. Okay. Does she have to report it then? Or, or because she gave it to us, she doesn't have to report it? Since the value is nominal, it doesn't seem as though there's a, there would be any reporting requirement. Cool. Obviously, it would be on a case-by-case -case basis. Yeah. Since it's free, it's effectively abandoned property. I'll see you pictures. Thank you. Um, but one thing that I do know is we had somewhat of a plan developing for how to furnish it. So, Director of Susan? Yeah, I think that's can you, can I ask Susan to come up? Because Absolutely. Susan, I'm, we're, we're working together on this, and we have some ideas. And she's. I love your shoes. <laughs> okay. Um, Susan Yamashiro, UCSB uh, staff. Um, well, in, in one way for surprise, let's just say, I let the in interns know that they could start an office list, uh, office supply list, because I'm happy to um, see if I can help provide, you know, purchasing, you know, items that they might include on the list for the office. So I think that that's okay. And then... These um, are incidental... So, no, right. Yeah, consumable paper, right. staples, pencils, pens. Yeah, and then um, as far as um, computers and furniture, yeah, UCSB has a, a central warehouse um, that they recycle things all the time. Um, so we can certainly, I thought, obtain things there, but um, I don't know if there has to be a price value associated with it? Not necessarily. It's really just as a, a tracking mechanism. And if it's a donation to the entire district, then it, you would avoid any type of reporting requirement to any individual one director. Mm -hmm. So it's just a donation from the university to the district for the district's use. Okay. So there's file cabinets, and chairs, office chairs, things like that. Awesome. And, and there are computers. We were just told yesterday there are computers that are perfectly good that are now surplus because they've come off of 
um, federal grants, research grants, um, and that might be one way to go also. But there may be a little bit of a hang up based on what you just said because um, the university can't give those to Susan for the same reason that we can't turn around and give them to somebody. So we have to figure out if they have min minimal value. The university will sell them yeah. to individuals for very small amounts of money, but maybe that, we'll have to figure that out. But there's, but it's clear that we can furnish with office equipment, file cabinets, potential uh, desks, chairs, all those things. Do we have an equipment list of things that we need? Uh, closest thing to that, I think, would be our budget right now. So that's just, but it's not saying specifically like we need a bookshelf. Okay, yeah. got it. Uh, Director Brett? So on with that, uh, one of the things that the formation committee spoke about uh, for the next formation committee meeting is doing a site visit uh, over to that room where we're going to go through and see like how many desks could we fit in here, file cabinets, stuff like that, because we didn't want to make a list without knowing like what our boundaries were because we didn't want to put a bunch of stuff on the list and then not be able to fit it in there. It would seem like a problem. So, we should um, bring a measuring tape. Bring yes, away. and the and the back room is unfurnished. I mean, it doesn't have any carpet in. It has a bunch of junk back there. It has, um, it, it needs a little bit of tender loving care before we could move stuff in there and permanently put it in there. So, um, I think if we work on getting that front room <coughs> operational first, that'll put us in a good place for opening and then right. look into the next so, next part. So that does raise another interesting point, which is. As quickly as the minute we get the signed document, we need to get some signage up. And it should be something more than just a paper sign. So that might be something that we try and figure out. In other words, we want somebody to put a nice sign that says Nyla Vista Community Services District. Fantastic. And we should get it right here on the front on the front signage where all the um, address that's an interesting yeah. Yeah, Director Brent? I was just going to say that I have all the logos prepared for that, so if anyone's interested in that, let me know. Okay. Director Freeman? You know, I was going to say, if Spencer designed something, I'm happy to print it on whatever size, whatever material we want. And then, yeah. Also, Director Helms, is that a. Yep. Director I, I just have one more <coughs> comment related to the formation committee. E everybody has a different idea about what Thank a nice you, office should look like. And I, I don't know how to. I've, I've watched in my career um, people move surplus junk into offices just because it was there. And then the office does not have much, it, it becomes like surplus junk. junk. Yeah. And so I, I don't know how to go about that. I'm, I'm, I was only the executive guy at the county. <laughs> I'm saying? just, I'm just <laughs> saying, I've, I've, I've seen other office environments at Isla Vista. And, as much as you can make that a really good office, we're bringing you know interns in there and making a really functional office. It, it does require some critical thinking about where stuff is ultimately going to go um, and how we put that stuff into the office. I, it's 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 a really nice opportunity, and um, and just I don't know I don't know how to go about that. I'm not very good at. It. Designing offices. Awesome, Jack. For Jordan and then for that. Mr. President, before you take any more comments from the board, I just want to remind the board that we're on uh, number four point two, which is receiving an update on the office space from. Uh, from I believe we're on four point two. Yes. Four point two, uh, and the discussions on logos or the, the best way to approach uh, acquiring some of the excess storage might be better taken up at, at the formation committee level rather than discussing uh, issues that might come before them at a future date. Perfect. And I will say, I think uh, the context for some of the comments were in the initial equipment and furnishing, but definitely on, on the logos, we should steer clear. Uh, Director Jordan? I yield. I just want to make an editorial comment, which is, Susan used to run the MGM Grand in Las Vegas <laughs> facility, the whole, the whole <coughs> shop. And vote for I think, she, I think she could make You lived it in Vegas? Look good. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean to give that secret away. But. <laughs> I'm experienced. I'm crashing at your house next time. <laughs> so within this, can we provide any direction for moving forward with 
initial equipment and furnishing, or or do you think we should so refer that back to the? I would, I would propose we refer it to formation committee. If, if those are issues that are within the formation committee's jurisdiction, that's something that they can take up. But the, as it, it's agendized, it's to receive an update from the president, which would be the president for reporting on the status of the office based agreement. Uh, consideration of plans for initial equipment furnishing, I think that would be the language that you could use to provide direction to the formation committee to take up that issue. So, yes. Awesome. Thank you. Is there a motion? Well, what specific direction is it that you're looking at giving us? Developing an inventory of items? Yeah. I think that's great. Yes. And then um, a recommendation yeah. to the board for direction to give to accomplish it. But I don't think we need to get that specific here. Just refer it to the committee. OK. Awesome. Anyone have a motion? So move. OK, <laughs> motion to refer to the formation committee the development of plans for initial equipment and furnishing of the office. Mm -hmm. That's good. Second. Okay. Moved by uh, Thurlow, seconded by Jordan. Let's see if we have that. So to refer to the formation committee the development of plans for furnishing and initial equipment of the office. And, and do we want to add anything to that to really take a good look at the university and their surplus property and as a potential for source? Um, Director Brent? To me, it doesn't seem like that's something that the board has any direction over. It seems like that's something that if the university chose to donate us items, then we would be able to accept them. Yeah. But that's not something that we can control per se. Yeah. On that, though, I was going to say to everyone that we had, do have that donation policy in place, and I've created a receipt document that is modeled off of that policy that I know President Bertrand has, and I can forward it to anyone else who's interested in looking at it for the policy. Awesome. All right, any other? Just just one, com one comment. It, it might not... If with the university giving something to us, that might not be considered a donation under that policy. That might be a contribution from other governments. And that's specifically in the policy that contributions from other governments are outside the donation policy. Similar okay. to sim similar to if they if they give us money, it's a contribution from other governments. <clears throat> Thank you. And I'm just looking real quick in um the uh, language from the resolution that we're about to approve on the formation committee, just to make sure that this direction is conducive. Um, well, it says it for any other, carrying out any other role as may be directed by the board. Fantastic. That's mm -hmm. all we need to hear. All right, any public comment? All right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered, motion passes 7-0. Any further discussion on this item? Then, all right. Uh, 4.3, receive update uh, from myself and Director Geis on our work with the County Treasury and Auditor Controller's Office. Um, the both of us have made a few trips over to uh, the County Administration Building where we, uh, as we mentioned last time, we set up the budget with uh, the Auditor Controller's Office, but since then we've uh, made a few deposits and um, on the back end, uh, Director Geis has done the electronic uh, documenting of the transactions. We closed the year with uh, $4,500 in our account, and Director Geis can speak more on that. Yeah, we met our goal. We got a $3,000 contribution from uh, the third district office, and that was accomplished with a tr transfer from one fund to another within the county treasury. Uh, we had a thousand dollar donation from myself, and we had a, a five hundred dollar donation from IVCDC that we'd like to uh, say thank you for. Um, and so we now have a grand total of forty five hundred dollars, and we recorded three <coughs> transactions. So we are in the black, they would say, right now. <laughs> and we we do have year end financial reports. They closed their books yesterday, so I have I have some transactions read that say open, but. For the next meeting, we can bring those three reports to the board as our kind of introducing everybody to how the financial system works, and here's our annual or monthly reports. Yes. 
or quarterly or monthly, however often we want to do it. And I'll be setting up a meeting with the office soon to get remote access <coughs> to the system. I know uh, Director Geist is in the process of setting that up for himself yes. right now. And so one of the things that they did, so just to give you a little bit more description, Director Bertrand is making all the deposits. He either has to go to the local branch of Bank of America, where they <coughs> found out there isn't one, and you can't do it's an ATM deposit. <laughs> so he has to go over to Fairview, that's the closest branch. Or, since he works downtown, he drops in at the Treasury and he can make a, he can have one last step and make a deposit there. A deposit is either making a bank deposit and then a Treasury ticket deposit, and then on the back end, that treasury de de deposit will say unidentified deposit. And I've taken on the task to say, okay, here's the, here's the deposit, here's the account to put it in. Uh, here's a, uh, hopefully we're putting scanned images of all the transactions so we have electronic filing. Um, we still have to make a decision about whether we're gonna run paper files at the same time. You know, have a file for all the deposits and have a file for all the bills, which probably is a good backup for the first year. Um, and so I'm also the, <clears throat> they debated this a little bit down at the county, but I'm called the department FIN manager, and I can give people authorizations to enter into FIN. So far, it's just going to be Ethan and myself, but if we want to add somebody else, then you can get entered. The other thing you can do is get FIN. Uh, outside, it's, it's an internet application, and so to get in there, you've got to come through the county firewalls, and that's a trick that you've got to go with uh, <coughs> ITS or information technology services at the county. They have to authorize you to do that, and then we have to have special software on our computers to be able to get in. So they're still having a little bit of trouble because we're both Mac users, and they... <laughs> don't quite support Max and we're working on it. So we'll yeah. get there. And, and I'll just add um, <coughs> that for all the deposits that have been completed, we have uh, high quality images and on the back of each check, we have a official stamp of the Isle Vista Community Services District right. to endorse. Uh, going out to Gina. Um, feel free to request $2,000, the other pledge $2,000 from the third district supervisor anytime you'd like as it's a new fiscal year. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. We'll Thank talk you. about that in future agenda items. Thank you. Um, any other board discussion? Any questions for us? What does FIN stand for? Hmm? What is FIN, FIN Financial FIN. Information Network. Got it. Thanks. Any uh, public comment or questions? All right. Uh, without any uh, anything else, we'll uh, move on to the next item. Thank you so much. Uh, so now 4.4, Fund for Santa Barbara Emerging Needs Grant Update. Um, Director Thurlow, myself, and uh, Jonathan Abu from the Self-Governance Initiative have been uh, working on an emerging, emerging needs grant for the Fund for Santa Barbara. Uh, Jonathan's been invaluable in uh, developing this, um, put together a great draft proposal um, as we have uh, here in our packet today. Um, we said that we'd bring this back to the board. I remember, um, Director Freeman, I think you requested um, or you appreciated that we would uh, bring this back just for uh, to be looked at before we send it in. Um, as you'll see, the application, uh, I think, falls within what we were directed to do, uh, looking to get $3,000 uh, for internet and phone connection that will allow us to communicate with our constituents, uh, fostering a great example for local participatory democracy, and also uh, for, for the programming of this room, uh, being proactive in getting people in here and knowing that it's their space to use. Uh, any other uh, board comments or discussion? Director Freeman. Uh, so we received, and uh, well, we, I received, as did Jonathan Abood, as did somebody else, I think Spencer, an email from Carmen Lodiz, um, who is a historian and I would just, uh, um, commenting on the proposal, I have a comment. Uh, get it. Uh, yeah, I didn't have a cover letter on it, so it seemed weird to put it in the pile of things that are in the front because it's, it makes it look like it's from us or something. Um, but Carmen won the. Okay. Information you distributed. Would you like to sum up 
some of the feedback here briefly? Or do you think I'm capable of doing that? Oh, not, not sure if you've <laughs> looked far into it. If not, we can take a moment to look at it. Director Thurlow? I can summarize it. Yeah, I would like to have Jonathan come up and summarize it. Maybe he can address this. I think you're incredibly generous, Jay, in referring to Carmen, who's an old friend of mine, as a historian. <laughs> um, Thanks, Jonathan. I that was going to say. But He's a historian. I think Carmen's changes are just uh, wording and cutting yeah. down, so I don't think it's substantive. Um, I did talk to Elena from the fund, and she wanted the proposal to only be two pages, though, and this is way longer. So either way, we're going to have to trim it down a lot. But we'll preserve the basic of 2,000 for internet and 1,000 for programming this room. And everything else is filler. Thank you. Thank you. And, and my sense is that the fund is, is very, very open to this, but we really should get it to them as soon as possible. I mean, that's the one thing that they're saying to us. Because they can turn around and give us the money as soon as possible, as soon as we get this in one week. The other piece of this, which is stop me, council, if I overrun the, the item in front of us. But uh, they are also strongly encouraging us to put together a proposal for their regular grant cycle, which would be $10,000. Uh, uh, I had a meeting with uh, Marcus Vargas, who's the executive director. Elena Richardson runs this program, so she's the person that's going to approve this. But he's very interested in what we can do here uh, long term in terms of community building community organizing, and particularly how this room and this government agency. So I, I think that we need to very quickly, and then there will be more to talk about under the fundraising proposal, but I think that's also we're going to have to figure out how we're going to put together a grant proposal to the fund for the next $10,000. And that's due September? End of August, beginning of September. So yeah. 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 It's not so hard to get it done though in a month yeah. and a half. Okay. And we will have to have a representative go and go through the tra the or the workshop. Oh, you yeah. don't have to go to that. <coughs> oh, really? And we've attended before. But we, so. we have to. Okay. Yeah. Good. I just wanted. Also. So. Uh, Perhaps um, what we might want to do here is provide direction to myself and Director Thurlow to. Um, further edit this appl application, keeping with uh, the spirit of what's been presented here, and to submit it. Um, I know you, you had a comment before I said that. Oh, I, I was just going to say, or suggest that you include um, some more specifics about what in the budget has already been allocated towards the office specifically, in terms of supplies and stuff, because that might seem like it helped the case. Thank you. Uh, yeah, director. There's an additional budget worksheet that she just sent me. <coughs> I forgot to give this okay. to you, so we can do that in there. Awesome. Director Freeman. Um, so I, I have uh, two comments on the text and one high-level comment. Um, uh, one comment on the text, which is really um, simple, um, is just uh, there's the word uh, Isla Vista. Uh, where is it? I think it was. Um, I have long been identified by the residents of Isla Vista has pain points. It should be as pain points. I fixed that this afternoon. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, so we can add yeah. all that. Just yeah. that, was, that, was, that was one lower I'm comment. One higher level this. comment is there is currently only one other small facility in Isla Vista that can do this. Um, the student owned and run Pardal Center um, with relation to providing um, a place um, where um, people can organize and host cultural events. Um, and I thought that that was um, weirdly uh, um, weirdly not it, disinclusive mm -hmm. of the um, various um, churches uh, in the area that I know have they've even hosted yeah. events for us uh, um, before but yeah. certainly do post uh, cultural events a little more sense yeah. maybe in the wording on that uh, and then one other uh, comment I have at the higher level um, which is I'm, I'm curious about that the the, the bu money budget usage because I, I, I just looked at the two thousand dollars for internet and um, and phone and so I um, I know that the kind of phone service that I, that I feel we would need some bare minimum would be 
essentially $5 a month for a voicemail box. Uh, and then the internet service, I, so I, I called Connie at the county in order to get more information about what those plans to do with this are. And she has also stated, as Genus has said, that they have no plans to immediately remove it. Um, but they're going to look into whether they'll ever remove it. Like maybe they're just going to leave it here for us um, because it's in this room and it's not in, it's not in that office space. And so um, it, it also seems weird to be, to be like asking for money for internet service when we kind of have internet service. It's not right ours, here. though. It's not ours, though, to keep and take and own, though. I think that we should be being proactive because the second that that gets pulled out, this is a useless space. So I think that it makes sense to be asking for it, even if, I don't know. To hold on to grant money for possibly a year to spend on something or to duplicate something right now, I mean, just, it seemed weird to me to have passed on the other ideas for, for example, so, yeah. span of translation now we to use now. But, okay. Thank you. Director Brant? Oh, I was just going to say that in the budget that we preliminarily, uh, the preliminary budget that we approved, we had budgeted $2,000 for communication services, and my understanding was that that included telecommunications was the main thing. And so it, it, are you objecting to the, the highness of the price? Um, because, I mean, from what I've looked into just from, like, Cox Business, I think that number seems pretty, pretty accurate for what it would cost if we bundled the two together. And I also just want to echo Natalie's comments that it is not our internet, it is the county's internet. And I'll also say that in our original budget uh, discussion, which we'll talk more on later, we had 2400 for that. So even that, we, we slimmed down um, to a number that we, we hope we could get service with. Jonathan? Yeah, no, that's just what I'm going to say is the 2000 is what someone quoted was the price. I mean, I pay 84 for internet a month. That's mm -hmm. almost half of that, and I'm an individual, so. Uh, I'm sure you guys have cost 2000 And then the 1000 I Carmen says he wanted to be more specific, but I thought it was generally specific. Just flyers, posters about the room, social media promotion about the room, maybe the sign, um, whatever, you know, stuff but to promote the room. Yeah. And I also really... Tell them how much we're going to promote it, exactly how, so... Yeah, and I really liked um, the ideas that you had in there about um, maybe some equipment for this room too, a whiteboard, yeah, yeah. Um, if there's some sort of speaker system that we need, uh, things to make this more user-friendly for good programming. Yeah, no, that's, uh, I think that would be cool for people to be able to use this better. There's no equipment in here. Yeah, so do you need a motion? Uh, you want some public comment? Yes, I'd like public comment first. <coughs> would anyone like to speak? Uh, Mr. Craig? I'm fairly sure there are whiteboards in the closet. Awesome. Thank you. Any other comments? All right. Uh, Can I just say in response to Jay that um, we're, when we go fundraising, we're going to be chasing grant dollars from foundations. And, and a lot of what foundations do is give you sort of direction. This is what we'll fund. We're not going to fund this. And this one is one where it's quick and easy. Um, I think that if we want, if there are specific areas of community organizing around Spanish language services. Um, that's definitely something that might be of interest to the Fund for Santa Barbara for the next grant cycle. Yeah, I'll, I'll just quickly say that I, when I spoke to Diana about the website being translated to Spanish, we talked about other different kinds of accessibility mechanisms for people who don't speak English. And you know, there's a lot of ideas, so that could be included. In, and they would be way more expensive than $3,000. So. I think that's it for another go. Thank you. So what kind of motion are we looking for? Um, I think direction for uh, myself and Director Thurlow to continue to edit this application and submit. Okay. submit. So motion to for President Bertrand and Director Thurlow to continue to edit this application with Carmen's comments in mind and submit it in a timely manner. Second. <coughs> awesome. Uh, can we amend it to just be comments since we heard a lot of different perspectives on it? Mm -hmm. I don't even know what I said. So no, you Carmen's said Carmen's comments. comments. Just, oh, just comments? Just this comments. Is, yeah, sure. Yeah. That cool. sounds great. Thank you. Friendly with the second? Friendly. Okay. Any uh, public comment? All right. Any more board discussion? Thank you for doing this once again. This is awesome. Yes, thank uh, you. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. Thanks, Jonathan. Man. Thanks, Jonathan.
All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Motion passes 7-0. Moving right along. Uh, 4.5 review of preliminary budget for fiscal year 2017-18. At our June 26 special meeting, we approved a preliminary budget, um, which was a budget that amended a recommended budget from our budget ad hoc committee. Um, and the reason that I put this on here tonight is we're, we will be adopting the final budget at our next regular meeting, the 25th. But in case anyone wanted to speak on this tonight, any information that they've considered since we last met, um, we could discuss that now. Um, or if there's nothing, we can wait until uh, our final, final budget hearing. Director Jordan. I called the company to rent a copying machine, and we're right on target. Right on target? Yeah. Oh, that's good to hear. Um, so that's that was good. And they said that, yeah. So thank that thank you for looking into that. Um, so, so that's 1500 Yep. They said that it'll be around there. Cool. Director Brandt. Uh, I was just going to say that so the, the bottom uh, row where it says beginning fund balance, changes in fund balance, and ending fund balance. So Bob and I spoke about this. This is something that we got direction from the board on when we approved the preliminary, preliminary <coughs> budget. That column is going to be changing and going to be put into a separate schedule for the preliminary for the uh, for the edits that we bring back from the committee to the full board when we come back two weeks from now. Um, so that's going to look a little bit different, but the numbers, of course, are going to stay uh, pretty much the same. Will the audit expenses it. change if that if we get receive the waiver? Um, that's something that our committee would have to make a suggestion on. So, um, okay, let me know. Thank you, Director Thurlow. Um, this sort of must <coughs> be this question when they looked at this budget, and that is, we're showing the nine thousand dollars of uh, rent lease, which is what we're showing as an expense to the county. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Are we showing that as revenue? In terms of the services we provide, is that under the 31? Yeah, there's nine in revenue and then there's nine in expense. Okay. So then that assumes that there's 20 from the university? Correct, yes. 20 plus nine, and where's the other two? Uh, third district discretionary. Yeah. Okay, right. Yes, and we... Um, so is that is that enough of a, is that enough of a, a window to, to ask to uh, for us to address the $2,000, or is that something that needs to come up during another agenda. That's going to need to come in another agenda. Another question, and Bob might just put the 9,000. My understanding is that in terms of the board, it came from the board of supervisor, that it's not going to like actually flow through your bank account. Right. So I don't know if that matters to it being itemized on that. So we discussed that with um, the auditor, and um, he said that it should still be reflected in our budget. Great. And it should be reflected in the county's budget on both sides, too. Thank yeah. you. And uh, on something similar to that um, line of thinking, we also, when the time comes for us to do a project with the university, we would also want to reflect that in some way, too, even okay. though it wouldn't be going right through our accounts. Um, any other uh, comments? Director Freeman? Um, I don't know if Natalie asked, and maybe at some point she could um, with the price per page on the copy machines that she's looking at though are? Oh, I didn't get that into yeah. it. I just kind of called real quick and asked how much it would cost for, per year yeah. for renting. And then I think that, yeah, you do pay per page. I don't, I'll look it up again. I have it written down <coughs> somewhere on a piece of paper. I'll find it when I get home and send everyone an email or something. Oh. If that's Brown Act, okay. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Nothing no. We'll talk about it at the next Never meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Director Brent. I was just going to say that uh, from what I remember when we settled as a committee on the number 3,500 uh, pages, paper was included in that. Um, so if that answers your question. Oh, yeah. And Natalie said that she had called and verified one thing. I was oh, like, maybe yeah. she verified the other thing. Oh, oh, yeah. like, oh okay, okay. Uh, okay. We oh, also yeah. put the numbers in based on my printing cost, and I optimized for high expense machine, low expense per page. But yep. if we're optimizing for low expense machine, they usually <coughs> gouge you on the page. This is really, so, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, and then one, one thing that I uh, have a little bit of an update on is, uh, so last time we uh, considered the CSDA membership, which uh, 
the cost for uh, CSDA membership is one thousand two hundred thirty-one dollars. Um, but as a organization that's recently <coughs> completed their free trial, uh, which ended on the thirtieth of June, uh, we are eligible for a twenty percent discount, which would bring it to nine hundred eighty-five dollars. Right now, we have budgeted six hundred dollars there. Um, so that's something that we can uh, just continue to consider as we get close to making the decision. Um, and that those were uh, the main items that we've discussed were, were what I was uh, thinking with this. Does anyone have any anything else? I, I would just say, you know, usually the protocol as you go to the final budget hearing is normally if you want to consider something to make a change from the proposed to the adopted, it generally should be, you know, like something from the formation committee should come that's in writing that suggests what that change is going to be. So it's not a free for all of fighting over what the what the budget is. I mean, usually that that's the formality at the county. If somebody makes a request from the public to do something, they ha it has to be in writing so that the board can consider it. So, like if we come through formation and say. Um, hey, let's let's take that thousand dollars away from the audit fee because we don't <coughs> think we're going to incur it, and let's put it somewhere else. Um, you know, we could probably have when, once it's in writing, then you could make a decision to put it somewhere else. But we we could make some of those kinds of suggestions. So I'm hearing we should at least do the audit and maybe one on the membership and say, you know, our. If, if that's the amount, 985, should we add 385? So. Right. That's an excellent point. And one thing I'll add to that real quick is um, in the next item that we're considering, the adoption of the resolution for committees, um, we are going to hopefully be extending the time period for the budget ad hoc committee through the end of July. It was originally the end of June, but uh, thanks to Ross, we have at the end of July. Um, so our budget committee will still meet. Okay, so and we perhaps the recommendations should come for, from us. That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Director Brown. I was this is just what I was going to say. Awesome. So if you have suggestions for the budget committee, how do you submit them? Like if, from, if it were like from me. Well, uh, how that would have to come to the board. Mm -hmm. So um, we have the director report template. Um, okay. Which, so That's that way fine. it would come right to the board. Um, that way there's not more than three of us talking on the budget outside. Well, okay. Bob, you were saying uh, members of the public who had interests if the member of the public was requesting money from us, generally they should put that request in writing. So let's say oh, they, oh, from you us. know they, okay. the county there's a lot of requests. That's and, right. And, okay. the, and the, the county budget act says those requests need to be in writing. You can't just go up to the podium and say, "Give me a thousand dollars" or "Give me ten thousand dollars" without them having some kind of written proposal. Okay. A good example is the. Visitors uh, Association, they come in and ask for $75,000. You know, it's generally in writing. Um, is that, do you, you mind that? that yes. Yeah. This, this is a preliminary airing of the numbers. It gives yeah. the public an opportunity to find out what the initial budgeting is. But yes, yeah, submission yeah. of budget requests in writing is yeah. standard. Just good protocol. Okay. So, any other uh, board discussion or comments? Uh, any questions or comments from the public? All right, seeing now that I'm comfortable moving on with this, so if you all are? Yes. All right, our budget ad hoc committee will be meeting and we'll come with some good recommendations. Yeah, just the, the last comment is we'll, we'll put in this adopted budget and then we will submit that to the county and they'll load that and hopefully before the books close in July we'll have a loaded budget. Excellent. Thank Director Brent. Does the budget ad hoc committee uh, want to remember that we need to get in touch and think of a time to meet sometime soon? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. So now moving on to 4.6, uh, consider adoption of resolution 17-1, resolution of the Board of Directors of the Isle Vista <coughs> Community Services District, establishing standing and ad hoc committees, memberships, responsibilities, and powers. Um, I think this is an excellent resolution drafted by council. Um, and perhaps, uh, Russ, if you want to introduce this. Um, sure. The, uh, to remind uh, the board and the public, uh, originally the resolution was brought in, in June. Uh, there were a number of corrections that were suggested uh, uh, from the board as well from uh, members of the, of the public. Uh, I did my best to uh, consolidate and incorporate uh, those comments in a way that, that made sense. I also got additional information uh, that was missing 
uh, in the original draft in terms of other committees uh, that were regular committees, standing committees, as well as, as ad hoc committees uh, that were omitted from the initial draft. Uh, so this is just an updated resolution to help uh, clarify, uh, to encourage uh, transparency and communication with the public as to how the district is doing its business uh, via the various committees. Also, Director Freeman. So I have not seen a copy of this resolution. Was it sent in some mechanism? That yes, it was sent from council to all members. Interesting. Uh, let me uh, see right now. Soric plus I IBCSD at soric.com. Yes, you know what date? July 8th. See a message from Ross on July 10th. Okay, um, then we have uh, some sort of technical difficulty, but um, we do have these copies in front of us. Um, Can I have a copy? Where? Yeah. Um, you, uh, I didn't print them because I didn't get one. Yeah, thanks. I can borrow one. I uh, have the, the hard copy here. <laughs> Uh, was the, this whole thing, or are these two? Uh, yes, it's oh, that whole thing. Oh, it's and then this, and this is the staff report. Yeah. So um, the ma the main changes, if I understand correctly, are adding the uh, university negotiations ad hoc committee, which we didn't have in there last time, clarifying some things with the community engagement committee, um, clarifying that our ad hoc committees. Uh, are not subject to um, the Brown Act and um, taking out the Roberts Rules of Order. That those were uh, some of the main components. Uh, changing the the date of our budget ad hoc committee um, for the university negotiations ad hoc committee and community engagement ad hoc committee. Both have ending dates of um, December thirty first, twenty seventeen. Yes, awesome. So they're both effective through the end of the year. Um, those were really the primary changes, just some of those details. But the intent is uh, largely the, the same as the original resolution. I'm just checking the two things I cared about. And, um, like one, you may have just listed it, I may have just, um, the, uh, we had this weirdness, which was the community engagement. That's been fixed. OK. Yep. I'm, yeah, I, think, I think all the changes that I cared about are in here, so I'm good. And um, also, there was one change I found, small change. On the first page, we have March 9th as our first meeting. It's March 7th. I accidentally didn't see that until I had the actual printed copy. I didn't catch that on the computer. Um, <coughs> I think we can still approve and mention that, that amendment. Yes. It's, a mi it's a minor revision. It doesn't really uh, affect the action that the board is taking. First resolution. Uh, that, would be, that would be an, an appropriate uh, revision to make. Excellent, thank you. Um, are there any comments from the public or questions? None? Any uh, more board discussion or comments, questions? I'll move adoption of resolution number 17-1, our first resolution of the 2017. With revision. Second. With revision. Okay. Um, made by Thurlo, seconded by Jordan. Let's just wait till it's typed out. She's not complaining about being angry. This is great work, Council. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. The interns are very helpful in gathering a lot of the information. So awesome. thank you for that. Thanks, interns. <laughs> so we have adoption of resolution 17 1 with the revision clarifying the first meeting date of the <coughs> IBCSD Board of Directors, March 7th. And that, that's friendly with the, the first and second? Yes. Okay. Um, any other public comment? Any uh, board comment or questions? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye
just because it's our first resolution, can we go through a roll call vote? Just because I, I just feel like it's, I feel like it's we, a resolution. We just voted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. so then when in, in the future, we, we can do that. Okay. Yeah, well, I didn't technically happens. say anything, so did we vote? <laughs> are, you, are you abstaining? No. <laughs> I say yes. Okay, so 7-0, um, motion passes, no abstentions, no absent, so ordered. Great idea. <laughs> I just feel like moving by consent is like a bad habit. Sorry. That's our first resolution. That's what I'm saying. All right. Uh, thank you so much for your work on that. I, I feel really comfortable with this going forward. and I don't have my copy anymore, but there was one line in the whereas is which really emphasized that the intention of this is openness, transparency, building the public trust. Uh, thank you so much for that. It's out of order now. Oh, all good. It's okay. Um, okay, now uh, intern task management. Uh, this was one <coughs> item that uh, we said would be a standing agenda item at the beginning of this current intern cycle. Um, for those of us who are working with interns to discuss um, what we've been working on and then also for directors who haven't been working with the interns uh, to request any assistance that they may need. However, I remember that Director Thurlow wanted to step out for this one, so we're going to go to 4.8 grants, Thank donations, you. and I other funding, that. and Thank we'll you. come back to that. Um, so 4.8 I put on here um, just because I know that there's been a lot of discussions at the committee level about fundraising. Um, there's uh, both in the formation committee with soliciting donations and then also university negotiations ad hoc with the grant from the university. Uh, so I just wanted to have this item on here for us to talk about any updates that have come in, anything that we should all be aware of. Uh, Director Thurlow. So uh, first, can we make sure this is on the agenda every single time? Because there's going to be items on this and I think, and we got to move relatively quickly. So uh, the first thing is on the university. I think it, we all need to understand the university operates kind of in a different world, which is it's a world of consensus, collaboration, and most important, consultation. And therefore, anytime you do anything, you have to continually consult with more and more and more people. I, I think the good news is that that, con role, that consultation in terms of the $20,000 has now reached a point where it's pretty uh, good and there's a lot of agreement and the key players have all agreed um, and now it's just a matter of uh, I, I really am personally trying to push um, the highest levels of the university to cut the check and so I think we're very close on that it's just a certain amount of patience has to be involved here because we do end up having to consult faculty we have to consult students, we have to consult staff, we have to consult budget people, we have to consult the regents, we have to consult Office of General Counsel, blah, blah. Um, the more interesting news, I think, is that uh, I went and spoke with John Clark, who's the executive director and, and president of Bauer. Is it Bauer or Bowers? Bauer. Singular. Singular Bauer Foundation. Um, and John is a, an alum who lived in Isla Vista, has a great interest. The Bauer Foundation really is very, very interested in education, K through 12. They're doing some dramatic uh, funding of that. I didn't go to him to ask for money. I went to him to ask for advice. And as Jonathan always reminds me, if you want money, go ask for advice. If you want advice, don't ask for money. Mm -hmm. So I asked for advice, and um, he's tentatively said um, he would be interested in pledging $5,000 to a larger, and then going to find two other foundation grantors um, to match his five to make 15000 But what he wants is a grander campaign around raising money for the um, CSD. And of course, the first question he asked is, how much do you need? And I, so I said $100,000, and he said, okay, well, what do you need it for? Everything, everything. So what we have to do as a group and as whatever we want to put this in terms of committee work is uh, we're going to have a meeting, uh, Jonathan and myself and Ethan, um, in a week, 10 days, actually in 10 days, to sort of lay out what his idea of is would be a grand fundraising campaign. Um, 
personally, I don't know if I have the bandwidth to put together a grand hundred thousand to two hundred fifty thousand dollar campaign. I don't know if anybody else does. Um, I'm a little intimidated by that idea, but the opportunity is there. So that's our next meeting is with the Bauer Foundation. Thank you, uh, Director Guys. Does um, do they think it, it's more effective when they say, what are you going to spend it on? It, uh, is it more, is operations easier to raise money for, or is infrastructure, or? What he's talking about, what he, you know, and this is where we, you begin to chase the money, mm -hmm. because he's got his own very narrow interests, which are, uh, I think, how are you going to organize the community to be a better community? And how are you going to take a leadership role? And if we give you money, how are you then going to be able to demonstrate that you actually have accomplished this organizing of your community? And that all needs to be in the, in the grant proposal. So I mean, the first question is, is what's, what do we, you know, what do we want to spend $100,000 on? I mean, if that's what we're going to ask. The second one is, do we have the bandwidth here with no staff to run a campaign that goes out into the community and gets individuals as well as, this man right here ran one of these, and it, it's a lot of work. Yeah, he used to be dark hair. <laughs> I try to remember, yeah. So let's say, this is amazing, thank you, that's awesome. But when it comes to our list of priorities, do we have that established? I know originally we were gonna discuss that 90-day plan. I don't know if that comes into play here or just our kind of priorities in order of like what we would do with funding when it's received. Well, I'll, uh, I'll say that I think what's, what we've seen in our discussions this far is that public safety public is safety, a top priority yep. of both this board and the university. And I do think that what, what I would like to see as far as us um, fundraising for a specific service or task is in the next month or so continuing to see where we want to go with the university and seeing what we can supplement on that. So that way, and I know you've mentioned this before, Director Thurlow, it's not just the university paying for something. So I think that we should continue to establish our mutual, mutual goal with the university promptly, quickly as we can, and then look to um, get more sources on that. Um, which I, I imagine is going to be an initial project with public safety, but we have also discussed um, tenant mediation as something that is of interest without getting too deep into that. Um, and then one more comment that I'll, uh, I'll make is, and I don't want to go too, too deep into this one, but I, I'm super excited by the idea of us um, doing a lot of this work with foundations. Um, as far as individual contributions, we're going to have a very big um, campaign coming up in Isla Vista for a tax measure for this district, and I won't go any further with that, but that is a concern that I have, um, and I just, with, with our efforts, I really want to focus on going after foundations. Well, I, I think within this budget, stop us when we start to veer, but within this item, I think strategically, we, that's a really, really important point, and it's kind of funny, because in my conversation with John Clark, the first thing he came up with was, you want money for the campaign, right? And I had to say, no, no. And in fact, I can't talk about the campaign, and I'm not going to talk about the campaign. But you're right about it. We have to be really, really careful that we're not um, undercutting any kind of efforts we might have to fundraise for the campaign. The foundations won't give money, although he was kind of interested in the idea that the foundations <laughs> won't give money for the campaign. Well, I'm glad we have uh, some, some agreement there. It, 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 and while we're talking about that, um, under the, probably what the count, our council would say is, we really probably should agendize the campaign um, uh, relatively quickly here, just to start to talk about it, start to introduce it, and start to... Agree. Okay. I think that's a good idea, because I don't know what we... I don't know what we can and can't do. You know, when... 
When you're well, that, that's my rule in county government, you can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but well, maybe that's the first thing we do is to we agendize a meeting where you give us some direction about state law. Um, certainly, I know from my own what I am is I am totally, totally barred and banned from using this university pen to write anything about the campaign. No, it's actually it's one I still Pepper from, nine. It's from yeah, Pepper Nine. He's, <laughs> he's got double three <laughs> Pepper Nine. <laughs> anyway, does that sound like something that's reasonable? Yes. Okay. Um, but then back to back to this uh, general effort for. Uh, Donations. I think um, I, I'm really looking forward to that okay. meeting with, with the Bauer Foundation. And we, can, we can report back at yes. the next meeting. And my, the only thing I want to make sure here is because I know the formation committee has been discussing a plan for soliciting donations. Uh, me being someone who's not on the committee, um, my understanding is that in this meeting, since the formation committee hasn't <coughs> discussed anything specific about the Bauer Foundation, it's fine for Director Thurlow and I to work on. Uh, but is there any concern that there's overlapping discussion there? I don't think so. We, we, you know, our discussions at formation committee have just been, I think, limited to ten potential donors so far. We identified and, a list, and, and the, Bauer the Bauer Foundation, Foundation was on it, but we didn't go into details about. Okay, thank you. So, and Mr. Trindle, do you understand the kind of what I'm asking there? Asking in terms of the formation committee or asking in terms of what the limits are on campaign? Um, so the formation committee, they've brief, they have this foundation on the list for uh, donations to solicit. And now uh, Director Thurlow has invited me to go to a meeting with him and, uh, and the, the foundation. Um, me be, not being a member of the formation committee, is that something that I can do, or is that? Well, that it's an issue that's pe currently pending before the formation committee, so the admonition that you not exchange information with the other members of the committee about that uh, topic would be paramount to remind you of at this point. Right. To prevent a brown egg violation. Thank you. So with that in mind, perhaps you take the lead on this? Sure. Jonathan and I, and you excuse yourself? Is that what you're advising? Yes. Okay. Just, I want to be so there. So excused. I, uh, excused. <laughs> <laughs> another, yeah. another fundraiser <coughs> down the drain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so within this, within this to general topic, though, is this where it would be appropriate to, to us uh, to direct the president of the board to um, write a letter to third district supervisor to request two thousand dollars, since this yeah, is part of our fundraising effort. I think that's consistent with four point eight. Board of Directors shall discuss and consider efforts and ideas for district funding opportunities, <coughs> fundraising, donations, grants, tax revenue. You see those as a, an open-ended list, not a, uh, a closed-ended list. Do you want a motion on that? What do you do you want? Want? Yes, a yeah. um, motion would be great. And I know that we have. Um, in one of our minutes, the language that we used last time. Yeah. Um, it's okay, I think it's... But feel free to, feel free to move whatever. Uh, I move to authorize President Bertrand to draft and send a letter to the 3rd District Supervisor's Office uh, requesting the transfer of the pledged $2,000. Second. Okay. Let's just make sure we have that. To direct the president of the board to write a letter to the third district supervisor's office requesting the transfer of the pledge two thousand dollars. I just want to. I just want to tell. Uh, I just want to convey to, to, to Gina. See, I wanted. To, I wanted to convey. We please convey to, to our third district supervisor our deep appreciation for her support. And that we really do appreciate all that she's doing for us. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Um, any public comment? Any other board discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? So ordered. Motion passes 7 0. Uh, have a good night, Director. Thank you so much. <laughs> you know, Thanks to our interns, too. Thank you.
Can we reflect in the minutes what time he's yes. leaving? Yes. Thank you. Great. Cool. Oh, Seven thirty-four. Um, so uh, this, this is an easy one now, just the intern task management. Um, as I'll tell you, I guess I'll start off on this one. Yes. Um, me and Penny yes. have been. Oh, I have a question for Are you out of 4.8? Because I have something to say on 4.8. Oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, so real fast, for everyone who doesn't, anyone doesn't know, uh, my name is Elijah Ettinger. I'm a district rep for Congressman Cargo Hall. I just wanted to bring up uh, our office is working on a grant workshop, probably in the next like, six weeks or so, with California Humanities, which is the uh, state sort of implementation of the National Endowment for Humanities. And so I think it would be important and helpful for just to learn how to do a grant writing and that sort of stuff. Additionally, they have two different types of grants. One is a quick grant that uh, is between one and five thousand dollars. Another one is a project grant that's between ten and twenty, and it's aimed at one of the things that it can do. And I think that we can fit it in. You could fit it into your purview is a lot of community engagement and. Uh, a lot of history and sort of has to be grounded in humanity in humanities, but I think that uh, there's ways to uh, apply for it at the board. Uh, so both the workshop just as a whole, but also with those grants, we'd be happy to work with. Whatever. Not asking you to take any action right now, but uh, looking into those funding opportunities. Thank you. And the larger grant has an ability to be matched. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. Cool. Um, Anything else on 4.8? Okay. Uh, perfect. So then with uh, 4.7, um, me and Penny over the past uh, week and a half, two weeks-ish, um, we've been working on Assembly Bill 722 stuff. Um, Penny's been contacting members of the Senate um, Governance and Finance Committee about 722 and moving it out in a manner, or first getting it to the committee because uh, there was some challenges with uh, making sure that we had a set committee date and that uh, 722 would be on the agenda. Um, so uh, Penny's been contacting those members. Additionally, we're working on a business outreach plan um, for that a communication from myself, similar to our 100-day update that I provided to the public through the independent. Um, just like, here's what we're working on. Here's how to contact us. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, so we're working on uh, targeting businesses for that. and. Uh, rolling that out and then also we've been talking a lot about plans for this room and operating it and uh, we'll continue to make Exciting. progress on that over the coming weeks. Uh, Director Brent. Um, so this past week, um, well first off, um, you know we had Alicia in uh, formation committee taking minutes and now she's here doing a great job. Um, we haven't gotten to work on a whole lot of other stuff, um, but I think that with this new office space opening up, there's opportunity uh, for us to help with that. Um, <coughs> and so, I don't know, I guess I wanted to ask you how you planned on running that, because I would seem like um, in, in that capacity, she'd be working with you more directly than she would with me, unless you wanted to, me to help well, out with management too. Cause for, for the community room, right? Yes. Yeah, because I, I haven't, I haven't been given any duty for managing the office space yet. Yeah, sorry, but, that's um, what I meant. But yeah, for the community room, what I'll do is I'll email, I guess, all of the interns about um, kind of what, well, first, first I'll establish with Penny like what we're going to do, and then from there, if there's anything left over, I'll email it out okay. to the interns. Though hopefully I can bring this up at our next standing meeting here, so that way it can be done um, with, with everyone participating. Perfect. Sounds uh, great. But I anticipate that at first, since uh, we have this direction, uh, the two of us will be able to to handle uh, handle it <coughs> for the next two weeks until we see you all again. That's great. So, yeah. Anything else? No, that's it. Okay. Director Freeman? Um, I have not provided any particular tasks uh, uh, recently to Stephen, but he's been continuing to act on the uh, general direction that he'd been given a while ago, um, such as uh, um, going and reaching out to community members and trying to accumulate and provide feedback back to the board. I was very happy that you brought, because I had actually asked Stephen a while ago to do kind of almost like a standing report from the community on, uh, on things. Um, uh, another, another thing which, which really needs to happen is we need to have a meeting of community engagement so that we can actually yes. get them better. 
Uh, yeah. How about um, tomorrow? Done. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so maybe it'll be much more interesting direction for you with the your future. Well, there's a lot of doors to knock on. There's a lot so of doors to knock on. Yeah. So I, I haven't been concerned that you haven't had anything to do. And I, and I occasionally will go around and I will see results uh, from uh, from things that Stephen has been doing. Although, we, uh, actually, the uh, you need to recall all of those pamphlets the, because the dates are now wrong. The, the, oh, I have them. I have them in my apartment. They're all. Uh, no, I'll, like, I'll also go around and yeah, we need to them. recall them. Sure. Yeah, right. yeah. I have a list of places yeah. I already visited. Okay, not, not pamphlets, but the cards. Um, but so the big thing, the reason why, I mean, I, I, I requested to have this agenda item was so that people like, wait. Oh, yeah. So that, so that if Natalie, for example, has something that she would like to have uh, mm -hmm. performed with an intern, that we now have a way of coordinating these sorts of things. So, Natalie, do you have any uh, things you need to get done? I was wondering if someone could write a, a thank you note to John Hartman on our behalf for the third district office. Is that too, is that out of our realm for the for their contribution of the three thousand dollars in the community room. Uh, that's totally something an intern could do, but I'll I'll do it. Yeah, just um, for it to come from. I was thinking it should come from us, but yeah. I was also thinking if it came from the whole CSD, and I figured if one of us wrote it, then maybe I guess it wasn't as much from the whole CSD. But I could be happy to write it as well. Cool. Yeah. So let me. Well, know. if you want to write it, actually. Okay, I could write it. Cool. I don't mind. All right. Um, but anything else? No. Director Geis, any? And um, I'm sure uh, Penny will help out with our uh, our efforts with the treasury as yeah, well. Yeah, I just say uh, the intern. This is a great addition to the organization, getting stuff done. Yeah. So it's really good. Awesome. Well, that sounds great. Um, any public comment questions? Thank you for putting this on, Jay. Thanks. Yeah. That makes me feel better. Awesome. All right. So. Uh, in record time, that concludes our discussion and action items. Uh, now moving on to five future meeting dates and agenda items. Um, our next regular meeting is the 25th. But at that meeting, we have our adoption of um, the final budget. Uh, but other than that, we will have this uh, continuing item of 4.8, the grants, donations, and other funding opportunities. We'll have our intern task management there. Um, at that time, we should have an update from the university negotiations ad hoc committee that might be a little bit more of a discussion than just a committee update. Um, I just want to say, I'll, I'll not be available. Okay. That would be cool. Thank you. Are there any other items that uh, anyone would like to submit right now or submit them to the secretary later, Dr. Brett? Well, I was just going to say the stuff that we've talked about thus far are um, the financial reports that the auditor controller has, yep. um, okay. the uh, report from Ross on what we can and can't do in terms of supporting a ballot measure. Campaign, yes. Um, and um, it looks like we already got this one out of the way, so I just want to run down those. Yeah. And one more item that I think uh, probably came up in some other minds as we did discuss things related to a ballot measure. Um, we are soon going to need to discuss when we want to do a ballot measure. Um, I would think that this next meeting, since it will be our final budget, maybe that's not the meeting to do it at, just because that's going to be a large discussion. Um, I'd prefer if we wait till the next regular meeting for that, the one after that, or a special meeting on that. So can we just we get started on the conversation, but not pick a date or a time period, just get the kind of ball rolling well we didn't want to do it at the budget meeting because that's just going to be like and no, the makes sense. you're right yeah never mind so the next one would be the 8th of august yeah wow um so we can uh work on that for them um any other suggestions for or requests for items at this point no thank you okay um I would just say that I would imagine that the formation committee will have something uh, related to a general manager at the 25th meeting as well. Fantastic. Um, all right, so that concludes all of tonight's business. Before I adjourn this meeting, is there something that someone needs to bring up that didn't get brought up during these items from either the board or the public? I just wanted to, yeah. the, did you mention that it's five meeting dates? Can you just clarify the next, yeah, sure. the next five days? Sure. So the, 
Sorry, so the, the very next meeting is going to be on the 25th of July. That's when we're adopting a budget. Uh, the 8th of yeah. August. Yeah. Then the 22nd of August. Yeah. Uh, then the 5th of September. Okay. Or I'm sorry, the um, twelfth, the 12th of September. Yeah, my it's going to be the 12th, right? Wait, yes. so it's not the 5th? And then the 26th of September. The 50th. It's not the 5th? It's not the 5th. Okay, I'm out of town. Yeah, okay, so you want me to keep you want me to keep going? And then September twenty sixth. No, I think just sweet, think yeah, okay. Good. Well Jonathan. Because he'll let you know it's all on the website. <laughs> 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 what about people listening who can't read the website? It is true. It is true. But all the great. Thanks, Jesus. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, without anything else, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Well actually I think it was already moved, right? I was going to try to work yeah, yeah. I, I have to <laughs> I beat you. Okay. No, it's okay. I'll just take okay. a second. I always okay. get the privilege. Move a second. So. Um, <laughs> all right. Any public comment? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, any abstentions? So ordered. Motion passes 601 with uh, Director so Thurlow out of the room. Uh, so efficient. We're adjourned at 745. Thanks, we're getting everyone. so much better at this, everybody.